covering all the news from every dark corner of the universe. SliceofSciFi.com Welcome everyone to the Slice of Sci-Fi listener feedback extravaganza. I am Michael R. Menengay. <laughs> I'm Wonder Woman. I deflect your bullets. Bing, bing. <laughs> Wait, so they can nice. tell. There we go. I'm Noah Richman. I have the fist. Oh, here. I'm Ben Rackington. Okay. And I'm the angry bird. King there you go. <laughs> uh, you, you, well, Batman? Uh, I'm Batman. 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 You're Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. That was I'm a good one. Batch. All right. Anyway, uh, this is the listener feedback show. This is the time when we talk about your comments that you sent in to us. Not a lot this week. Unfortunately, we had a little problem with the feed. Sorry Oops. about that, folks. Uh-oh. Oops. Um, but uh, we have uh, re- since resolved that, so you should be able to catch up and everything. Of course, you can send in stuff by uh, calling the numbers 206-339-TREK. That's 206-339-8735. Or, of course, you can use our really cool iPhone app Yay. and send in audio and video. It doesn't have to be just video, folks. You can use that to actually send audio in, too, by the way. <laughs> just saying. Like some of the people that are go. going to be. Yeah. But anyway, let's dive into it. Yes, please. Hey Slices, it's Arkle watching the latest episode up on Blip here. And hey, um, you guys talk about the movies coming out in 2013 and you mentioned uh, Beautiful Creatures. Uh, my mom and I actually saw a trailer for that when we went to see Les Mis. So did I. And um, yeah, it doesn't <laughs> look all that good. It doesn't um, look all that I, I bad will either. Give the, um, the studio props for one thing though. Excellent choice of using a Florence and the Machine song in the yes. trailer. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I don't know. I mean, uh, we've said this many, many, many times on this show, and that is you cannot judge a movie, movie by, by trailers. trailers. No, you can't. Because yeah. they, uh, they make really great trailers, mm-hmm. they make really crappy trailers, and it has nothing to do with the movie. Right. Yeah. They might have made it look like Twilight, but it may not be Twilight. Exactly. Yeah. Besides, besides, it has Emma Thompson. Exactly. And Vi- Viola and Jer- Davis. And Jeremy Irons. Uh, Jeremy Irons. Those yeah. actors. Oh, yeah, Viola Davis. I forgot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, Slice is Mike from Moine, and um, I just wondered if there is any help for people that, when discussing movies, they see The Hobbit and Texas Chainsaw and automatically <laughs> think of the Texas Hobbit Chainsaw Massacre. Awesome. Uh, I knew he was going there. Right? Uh, he does it, do does it involve too. trolls in a cook pot? <laughs> <laughs> That's where I go. Butchering's go. easier with a chainsaw. Everything's easier with a chainsaw. You it's, know, a tr- that's, it's true. It, it, I it love is, the trolls. It is the universal tool, you know. Right? It gets things done. Hey, Slicers, it's Arkel calling in regarding uh, geeky holiday presents. That's ah. uh, my side of the family with where I'm at now. Um, they do the Yule thing as opposed to the Christmas thing. But, um, yeah, it was kind of light this year because, you know, 2012 has been rough financially for everybody, uh, but uh, my mom and stepdad and little brother all got me uh, the ROD Blu-ray set, which, Ooh. you know, I mean, I don't have a Blu-ray player, so I'll have to borrow no, have my, to get one. <laughs> my little brother's PS3 to watch them, but um, uh, yeah, it's the complete uh, Reader Die set, okay, the OV... <laughs> A and the TV series, which is that's awesome because cool. I mean, Read or Die is my favorite manga. So, <laughs> yeah, that's <is> particularly cool. <laughs> I think it's a pretty good take, all in all. Blue Ray players are cheap. All righty. Yeah, they really come down. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, they have because well, you know, if you can just steal your little brothers, I think that's a better way to go. Yeah, yeah. that's true too. Yeah. I mean, you know, because spend your money on other things. Can I? Can I talk about something nerdy? Oh, I got. Of course I'm super you can. About. Yeah. I got the full set of the Sandman comics, like the new. Oh, really? Oh, that's pretty cool. sad. Oh. I'm nice. so excited. In addition to obviously to my Wonder Woman T-shirt, and wow. and I'm gonna say something embarrassing. Are you ready? Okay. Super I ready. purchased for Brett Philippeck Star Trek boxers. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Do they say to boldly go? No. Or- no! 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 no. They're they're the color of the shirts, and then have like you know All the Star right. Trek little logo on them. But there's the captain, and then there's the science officer, and I think engineering. I yeah, still think that's it? totally awesome. It's, 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 it's amazing. It is, but it so needs to have boldly go where it really no man should. has gone no, on before. The bu- <laughs> 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 or the front, or the front, either or, depending. Like, did they have? Did they have 
red ones, and then you have red shorts. Red oh, shorts. Red shorts. Oh, that's Don't awesome. Don't wear those underwear. You may get into a car accident and die because you're yeah, wearing the but red they're the perfect ones. Just make sure they're clean. That's okay, all. that's right. it. I want royalties for anybody that comes up. <laughs> we, we, we came up with way better than that. Oh, man, we need our own store. We need our own yeah. slice store. And we then do. Sell the underwear. We should do that anyway. Well, we do have a slice store, actually. Yeah, we, we, have haven't spent, we haven't spent a lot of time on it. No, no. I can't. you can still buy t-shirts there, sort of. And, yeah, we uh, so should forth, do more. But, yeah, it's actually kiltwedgie.com is actually, where, if it's still there. So. I remember Kilt Wedgie. I never yeah. understood why. I well, mean, I wasn't around for that when it was Kilt, named. Kilt Wedgie actually came from one of the uh, one of the conventions, um, and basically Kilt Wedgie was being coined around there. Do you, uh, the guys wearing the kilts got the Kilt Wedgies, Wedgies. and um, then basically it became Kilt Wedgie. And I went, "That's awesome! I've got to have that that URL." No, it's, so I, I registered it. When you think about it, it's funny. It's just I don't hear Kilt Wedgie and think buy stuff. <laughs> it, well, yeah. it's because I uh, I registered the domain and I didn't have anything better to do. You're with like, it, I got so. this domain oh, sitting around. Yeah. I'm gonna make it a store. <laughs> And we'll make it a store. It makes sense. Hell? I'm, so, I'm with you. you Let's do it. <laughs> How many domains do you own? <laughs> oh, too many, huh? <laughs> hey, Slice of Sci-Fi crew. It's Moldy Squid showing off the geeky Christmas present I got this year. That is cool. Oh, that's that's bitching. That's cool. <laughs> that is cool. Hey, so a storm tro- a trooper spatula, spatula. to, um, ch- to uh, flip your Death Star pancakes. Oh. Could be. Yeah. That'd be cool. That's what you need. A Death, Death Star because, mold for a pancake. That'd like, be great. Oh, hey. You could you have could Death have... Star, you could have the Millennium Falcon, because oh, that's a distinctive go. shape, That's right? kind of round. And yeah. there you go. cinnamon rolls. Well, you oh, could use yeah. Yoda. You could do Yoda. Yoda. That'd be right. recognizable so shape. Yoda head. Stormtrooper. Yeah, more stuff for a store if we could go <laughs> so, Somebody's going to make a fortune listening to this show. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we need to be I know. We're so bad. bad. We have... We come up with all these great marketing ideas, and then we don't see a we're too lazy to do anything with them, so... Nobody does anything. Yeah, whatever. Let's do some sweet leaf. How about that? Maybe we can market that and not get paid for it. That'd be great. Hello, Clipper Bell, Ned, anybody here? What the hell is going on? I expect this kind of thing from sweet leaf, but not Ned, and certainly not from Clipper Bell. I'll just cue up the intro and... Damn it. Let's see. Here we go. The adventures of sweet, 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 sweet. Oh, geez, Clipper Bill's gonna have my butt. What's this? Hmm, it's addressed to the studio from an Amanda in Tennessee. Must be one of Sweet Leaf's groupies. Whoa, I sure didn't know he was into that. And that's for damn sure ain't no Amanda. Enough of that. Let me get the show going now. So what are you really? I googled fairy. I got lots of Disney stuff and gay porn. Nothing like you. I hope you didn't find anything like me looking at gay porn. Hey, some of those guys are hot. Wish I had one of them instead of you. This should do it. I just need to get Sweetly back into the lab and in a meditative trance. This new phasing coil should give quite good picture of its brain waves. I just hope that Sweetly is actually capable of meditation. If I can get a clear picture of Sweet Leaf's thought patterns while he is remembering his sabbatical for mortality, then I should be able to obtain meaningful data to interpret. That's odd. 
the screen is full of G's. Ooh, ooh, I hope it's another virus for my collection. Hey Slicers, it's Brian from Slice of Sci-Fi TV, and I have the coolest new application to show you. It's the Slice of Sci-Fi app. Here's how it works. By selecting the Slice of Sci-Fi application, it brings you to the home page where you can select an episode, ask a frequently asked question, go to the Slice of Sci-Fi website, the Slice of Sci-Fi TV website, and the Slice of Sci-Fi XM Sirius Satellite site, so you can read, watch, and listen to any of the episodes. Start off by selecting an episode. Now, once you've done that, you can leave video feedback. Hey Slicers, I really loved the last episode. Audio feedback. Hey Slicers, I'm leaving you some feedback for the radio show. Or send us an email. So download the app and share your thoughts because we want to hear from you. SliceofSciFi.com Hey Slicers, it's Kevin Batchelder. Uh, talking about uh, folks looking for recommendations for sci-fi to watch. By all means, kind of starting up on the 14th is Lost Girl Season yes. 3. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sci-Fi Channel, Kevin which I think many people already know. It. But also, we're going to be getting the import of the Canadian series Continuum. Continuum. Yes. We'll yes. At 8 p.m. starting on the 14th. Looks good. Uh, seen the first season. It's very good. Uh, not perfect, but still very entertaining and smart sci-fi. So mm -hmm. I think folks will appreciate it. Check it out. Take care. Yeah, I've seen an episode or two. It's, it's yeah. actually really good. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to the rest of it. Oh, nice. Do do we know have any dates on Defiance yet on Oh Ziffy? yeah, that looks Not interesting yet, too. Everybody's oh, everybody's going crazy. Oh, yeah. that that's so ambitious. But Lost Girl, looking forward to that. Yes, yes. Uh, it's great stuff right mm -hmm. there. So, hey guys, it's Matt in Washington D.C. No, uh, that's not me. That is my full size suit of Halo armor. It was the first thing my girlfriend saw when she arrived at my house for what turned out to be our third date. No, she did not run screaming into the streets. In fact, she stayed long enough for me to find out that she turned out to be a Whedon and Farscape fangirl. Anyway, we've been together ever since. And in conclusion, that nerd dating show can suck it. Rock and roll. <laughs> is that an awesome suit of armor? That's great. Well done. Wow, that some, took some time, to say the least. I was impressed. I love it. I bet Fox Leader is jealous. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're just asking for it. Or he's in for love. Mm. That could be, too. Oh, with Matt? Oh, dear. Yeah, why not? <laughs> hey, guys. Christine from Michigan. I was listening to your discussion about The Hobbit, and you brought up Martin Freeman in Love Actually, and I have to correct you. He was not a porn star in Love Actually. He was a stand-in. Stand-in <laughs> stand for the actors when they do the boring stuff like set up camera angles and lighting. <laughs> he wasn't actually an actor at all, and that's why they were so blasé when they were doing those scenes, because they weren't acting. They were just standing in. Also, I've never read The Hobbit or... Uh, Lord of the Rings or Heretic. The Cimmerillion. I uh, wow. just watched the movies and I have to say, I thought The Hobbit was great. It was fun and uh, it didn't way, feel like there obviously. was any filler. didn't feel like it was drawn out. It was just a fun movie and mm. I really mm -hmm. felt mm -hmm. I appreciated a lot of the characters unlike that old cartoon which was horrible. <laughs> tragic. I but like none of the Hobbit. humans wear pants. That was just horrible. I mean, it, 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 it was such a bastardization of the, oh the brilliant yeah. source material. And nobody really, I think people that never read the story did not realize how bad that really was yeah. until they saw what Jackson did with it and got closer yeah. to the source material. Mm -hmm. But that's a good perspective from somebody who hasn't read the books. Um, yeah, Brett was the same way, and he enjoyed it. I think I think he thought it was a little bit slow in parts, mm -hmm. but um, it's fun. Hobbit is fun. <laughs> it's a fun it film. Is, yes. absolutely. Hey Slicers, it's Payne and the Ricker here at the Sydney, Australia Bureau office. And along with me, 
Australia. See you right, mate. <laughs> so we're here to send best wishes to our uh, main headquarters there in Phoenix. And as you can see, Australia in the sun wishes you the best. Happy New Year. Wow, Yay! that is awesome. I wish I had put that one in the middle. I should have stuck that one at the end. And, and awesome. taking time off to send us a little hello from his honeymoon. Congratulations, mm -hmm. Ricker. Yeah, absolutely. That is so cool that he's uh, out there um, bathing in the uh, basking in the sun. We're jealous. It's yeah, we're so jealous here in Arizona. We yeah. never get to see the sun. We never get to see that I mean, with thing. the beach, hello. That's true. We well, never get to see the beach. Desert. Yeah, well, that, we're the beach without the water. Yes, very good. I have That's different. That's different. Wow. Hey guys, Christine from Michigan again. I wanted to weigh in on this uh, brick and mortar bookstore going mm -hmm. to hell thing mm. because uh, I got a ten dollar gift card from Barnes and Noble, mm -hmm. and and I got that for filling out a survey. So Ooh, I went in to quick. pick up the newest Dresden book, Cold Days. Mm -hmm. And I went in there, found the book, and pulled out my smartphone and looked up the price on Amazon and yeah. found that even with $10 off, I would be paying $4 yeah. more yeah. than I would at Amazon. Exactly. Amazon wasn't yeah. giving me a discount. Right. And I don't know what kind of overhead they've got at these brick-and-mortar stores, but charging an extra $14 for a book you're going to drive yourself into the ground. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Let me tell you, even though I drove myself to the store and I had a $10 gift card, I walked out without anything because yeah. I didn't know what was worth buying. And, you know, it's it's becoming a sad tale out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's one of the things that we just kept going on and on and on and on about over on Dragon Page. Kind of the reason why we're not doing that show anymore because there's not a lot to do anymore. <laughs> um, but uh, it, it really is. I mean, we've just been slowly seeing the stepped demise of brick and mortar. But I, th I think there maybe is a spot, and I'm hoping for, for your niche expert type store so mm -hmm. you know we, we, we oh, yeah. everybody used to have neighborhood bookstores and then they had the big one the giant ones came and drove the neighborhood bookstores away and now online came and is driving the giant brick and mortar stores mm -hmm. away but you still have places like the poison pen in scottsdale with yeah. specializes in uh -huh. mystery and intrigue right. because it's so more than your local bookstore books. that has people there mm -hmm. that when you're looking for hey i like this book and you know your people and you go in there and they say oh if you like this you'll really like this and you yep. talk right. and you know right. what I mean? so, so it becomes and, and not a, a only community that, thing uh -huh. and, and the Used bookstores. I used mean, exactly. bookstores are like that. Books, now uh, your uh, book yeah. nooks and so forth. Those the the used stores are actually getting a hand yes. back in the game again, where the brick and mortars were basically driving them into non-existence. Mm -hmm. Now they're coming back with a resurgence right. because now people have all these books, all these cheap books they bought that they <laughs> bought, and now it's this cheap book trade that's being. Um, um, bandied about and it's awesome yeah i, I mean this resurgence kind of cool it's a it's a restructuring of the corporate mm -hmm. um, um, business model is basically what we're seeing and it's awesome I, it's I, I'm interesting. liking it yeah i wonder how it is for authors though um, i can't imagine it affects them yeah. a whole lot it's, well, it's just I, a different distribution model really i mean it, it, it they th as long as people are reading them they don't care it doesn't matter where the money's coming from. Yeah, right. they, they get their, they I mean, get their I, I, fee right up, right up front. Anyway, right. so well, no, it's well, well, not necessary. Not not yeah. as much anymore. That's yeah. kind of going away. Um, that's a whole different conversation with the publisher. I, right. Gee, I ought to do a, I ought to do a podcast about this, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. gosh. Oh, mm. Let's let's get out of this before I, I <laughs> make, a of, a make a lot of people unhappy here. Hey, slice of sci-fi crew. It's Moldy Squid again. I just wanted to add a couple of comments about what Sam said about Judge Dredd in your uh, Extra Cuts movies of 2012. That was a fantastic film. I gotta say, I'm impressed. I'm a Judge Dredd fan going all the way back to when I was a teenager in the 80s and I had my grandparents send me 2000 AD from England. And uh, I can't imagine anyone doing a better job than Carl Urban. That scowl was carved into his face. The growl in his voice was just perfect. And it was wonderful that you couldn't tell when he was joking or if he was joking, but he may have been joking. He inhabited that role. I got, there's no one else who's going to be able to top that. The girl who played Judge Anderson, man, she's pretty good too. She had some great facial acting. She's pretty nice to look at. Lena Headley from Game of Thrones was a phenomenon. I thought she was a pretty good actress before this. But man, did she ever stretch in this role. I gotta say, she is not a one-trick pony. And I look forward to seeing more from her. 
Overall, I enjoyed this film much more than I enjoyed The Dark Knight Rises or The Avengers. Yeah, I know, a funny thing to say, but this was a stripped down hardcore sci-fi action film that didn't have any extras and unnecessary crap thrown in on top. There was no cast of thousands that you had to pay attention to. There was no pseudo-intellectual philosophy to bore the audience. And there was no origin stories. Thank God. I'm tired of origin stories. I tell you, if Hollywood would make movies like this, I might actually go out and see more of them. Anyway, this is Smoley Squid. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your time. Wow! Yeah, I tell you what, that is a perfect. I, I, you, you, uh, exactly. Ditto to everything you just said. It was right. awesome um, because I, I was absolutely blown away at how good Dread was. Right. Um, because I just got it. It just came down off of uh, the Apple um, feed, so I, I was. I able think it was to get one of the best action movies of the last year. It I really, really was. was shocked at how good it was, and, and it I, I think it basically that, flopped. It's that stink that was on the old Dread. Yeah, yeah, I know that's what this. it is. We're, we're, we talk about it again in, in the future. Yes, <laughs> in the travel. future, it's time travel. <laughs> yeah. yeah, in time travel, we go we go ahead um, a few weeks. Uh, about a week here and, and, and talk about this again. But it, but, it is sad that it, because I'm not sure we'll see another one and it really deserves to be a franchise. Oh, it, it, it may come back. I'm I hoping so. the video sales and people rediscovering it. Yeah, it, it could develop a cult following. And yeah. if, we, if we can push that word out there, please, if you missed it, go see it. Yeah. You yeah. Got, go buy it. Go see it. You will not be disappointed. It is phenomenal. Yep. It is. I, 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 Carl, uh, Carl Urbine and this. There He's is so no good. other. There is He's no other so dread good. for me. The fact that he never takes his helmet off yeah. makes that character work all the way through. It's uh, and, anyway. And, and, there's ways it could have been cheesy, and it wasn't. The action is fantastic. There's no stupid in the movie. Like it no. all makes sense. You never find yourself nitpicking at things and going, "Really? Would you do that?" Or I mean, I just on many many levels, I really really loved it. Without without spo- yeah. how can I do it without spoiling it? But um, the the rookie. Mm-hmm. And her ability yeah. that you learn about early, they could have gone really bad with that, uh-huh. and they didn't. And the drug, yeah. the drug effects oh, were cool too. The drug effects were and phenomenal. We, I would like to remind folks that Brian Brown saw this in 3D and said he liked it. Yes, wow. because of the the effects they do when people are on the slow time drug, it's pretty cool and it worked really well. And so I'm just saying. There you go. Brian Brown endorsing 3D. How much more of an endorsement can we give you, folks? Go see this. Go buy it. Do whatever you need to. Ooh, Let's do, get some more. I do have a correction for you, Michael Armin Gay from Summer. Uh oh. Okay. You did tell her to kill Kilt Wedgie. Oh, okay. So, so sorry, it's gone. So we now have um, shop.sliceofsci-fi.com, and there's not much up there because we are out of shirts. Ah, so okay. So maybe mental well, note to us to do better. Maybe we should do some more with that then. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, well, well, we suck. Sometimes. Hey, Slicers, it's Arkel, watching the latest listener feedback show. Um, <laughs> well, you know, I got to give this to uh, Tim Adamick. He <laughs> actually made that song sound good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> them's fighting I mean, words, Arkel. I hate the Pina Colada song. Oh, the I mean, Pina Colada I really, song. really, really hate Love the Pina Colada, the Pina Colada song. song. But that, that, that little version of it actually kind of worked. There you go. Right. And now I got to come up with some way to I need to customize lyrics to like something like maybe from like maybe this is the moment from Jekyll and Hyde and call that in <laughs> okay my singing voice is nowhere near as good <laughs> you, you guys remember probably from yeah. the whole Joust Frogger thing I sang a couple of times and, yeah well no actually it's... you know what I, I won't, I won't yeah, thank you thank you no, no, let's, I don't let's, no, no, let, let, let's not do that you no, know please, what you. nugget of truth we learned at the party was that um, Tim did slightly auto-tune himself yes. a just, little bit just to make it sure it wouldn't be painful he, on yeah, our ears yeah he admitted that he did it very subtly Small. I mean I really well, he did it. he did it very subtly because he did like 90 takes and by the time he actually got it down um, he was pretty much fried that's what I discovered so yeah <laughs> what are you doing? Hi, Harrison. Love you. It's my sister, Harrison. Let's say hi, Harrison. Hi. I'm Phoebe. Even though it's kind of weird, I don't know. And that's my sister. What's her name? 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 Pig. 
<laughs> Holy cow! <laughs> okay, <clears throat> parents. This is what happens when you parents you leave your iPhones with your kids? Parents, <laughs> um, this is a little little PSA for you. Um, if you are using the Slice of Sci-Fi app, please be uh, par- cautious and uh, know where your phone is at all times, and uh, don't let your kids play with your phone. <laughs> just. Just or we will saying. broadcast your children on the internet. Slice That's right. Sci-fi That's what we do. Not responsible for, <laughs> <laughs> for that anyway. If you send, that was adorable though. If you send it, it will get played. <laughs> hey, slice of sci-fi crew. It's Moldy Squid from the Great White North. I was happy to see that you played my video f- feedback, uh, but uh, I am more than ready to put up or shut up, though, Mr. Brian Brown. Just you wait. You need a replacement for Crazy Joe. Today, however, I'm calling about your books to film mean. I would recommend Altered Carbon by British writer Richard Morgan. This rocket-fueled, ultraviolet, high-concept science fiction thriller where people can be downloaded into cloned, natural, or artificial bodies. The plot revolves around Takeshi Kovach, a former UN envoy turned criminal who is forced to investigate the body murder of a hyper-rich Earth citizen. The envoys are sort of an interstellar super-soldier enforcement wing of the government has a very vicious and scary reputation, and Kovach has a very scary and repu- vicious reputation within the young boys. He is downloaded from prison, which is a suspension of consciousness, into the body of an Earth policeman to solve the mystery. Why should this be a movie? Well, besides the really cool concept of downloaded personalities, the novel is simply dripping with noir-style dialogue, wickedly cool characters, including an artificial intelligence hotel, violent action sequences, explicit sex, and a plot that revolves solidly around organized crime, future tech, and the consequences of being able to live forever. And it's also the first of three books set in the same universe with Kovacs as the protagonist. Who should be in it? Well, I don't see a lot of films, so I'm not hip to the young hot things in Hollywood these days, but the description of the body Kovacs is using sounds just like Vin Diesel. One of the interesting things about the world is that Kovacs wears several different bodies in each of the books, and so you can have different lead actors for each film. As for a director, it's hardcore noir action piece, so you'd need a director who's not just skilled at action films, but who knows how to block out shots for that noir feel. Maybe Sam Mendes or Guy Ritchie or Pete Travis who directed the new Dread movie. My first choice for soundtrack would be Vangelis, but considering the much more distant future setting, Paul Leonard Morgan, who also did the music for Dread, or perhaps Daft Punk, might be better suited. If you haven't read Altered Carbon or the sequels, you really should. Morgan is one of the best of the new breed of British science fiction authors. His work isn't for everyone, mostly because of his unflinching ultra-violence and explicit sex. But if you don't mind that in your science fiction, you owe it to yourself to check out his works. The Kovacs books are, have incredibly intelligent, original, and inventive future universe, and his new fantasy books are pretty amazing as well. Anyway, sorry about the shakiness of the video, but, uh, you know, it's been one of those kinds of weeks. This is Moldy Squid from the Great White North. From the Great White North. Awesome. Very, very cool. Yeah, that was a good review. Uh, it is. It, 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 and this is our books to uh, movies meme, meme thing that yeah. we were going out. And we did actually have a call out uh, to Web Genie. To say, you know, let's just get rules? some let's get some real rules down and get some clarification yeah, on this. We had some quibbles last week. He actually did. I think he actually followed those very well. Mm-hmm. He gave us he gave us the the book. He gave us the plot. What, how, casted it for us. Mm-hmm. Gave us the music director. A yep. Whole nine yards. How would you envision this book being brought to film? So, but um, yeah, let's get it from Web Genie and see what she says that we can do with this meme since All she right. created it. Hi Slicers, this is Web Genie with your book to movie game rules. What kind of book can you use in your book to movie promo? It can be any type of book that is in the slice of sci-fi wheelhouse. Sci-fi, fantasy, horror, magic realism, whatever. I'm giving a special dispensation on behalf of Keith. People, you can pimp a biography if the subject's life was so fantastic that it has been the inspiration for fantasy or SF books. For example, the explorer Sir Richard Burton. Like any good game, there are limits. Firstly, the author can't already have a story that's been made into a movie or TV series. However, if they have stuff that's still in options, 
that's okay. If the author has said they don't want their books filmed, then we don't use them. Lastly, you have to sell your idea. It's no fun unless you give us something to talk about. So things that you can do include casting the movie, telling us who the director should be, offer us a film location, imagine the soundtrack, tell us why a director would want to film this novel, imagine a special effect, or give us a marketing tagline. Lastly, we have the Cloud Atlas category. If you're sad because you feel your beloved book can never be filmed, instead of promoting it, tell us why you think the book is unfilmable. Perhaps the special effects are not possible. Perhaps it's the point of view, or writing style, or plot, or the subject matter. That's it, Slicers. Have fun! Wow. Mm. Okay. So yes. there you go. That certainly yeah, changes things. Changes it does. Things. I'm Maybe totally going to have to sit down and put some thought into it right. now because I have mm. my thing that I want to do, but now I have to think about all the stuff. <laughs> I tell you, and PowerPoint presentations rock. Yeah. yeah. I tell that you was what. Really, really well done. And um, yeah, I follow the rules because you don't want her to hate you. I no, no, definitely not. not. I, don't know. I kind of feel like I want to argue with <laughs> the rules. Don't alienate Web Genie. No. So, so we had um, Molly Squid did a really good job with his. Then yes, he, he actually followed the rules without knowing the rules yes. ahead of time. Yes. Well yes. done, sir! Extra bonus points Absolutely. for you. Absolutely. Well, there you go, folks. So, if you have something and you want to share it, add it, um, send it in. We want to hear from you. Tell yes, us, indeed. tell us what we're missing. Tell us what movie needs to happen. Since geeks rule the world, <laughs> we, we need to know. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. Good night. <laughs>